alaikum, dearest respective viewers, and welcome to Live in London on this auspicious occasion of the birth of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. The founder of Islam, the grandfather of the Ahlul Bayt, and the man that brought moral and ethical values to the whole of mankind. Millions of us will be celebrating his birthday in our centres, in our homes, and we would like to join you and pass on our congratulations to you and your families on this auspicious occasion, and especially to the Imam of our time, Imam in Zaman, may Allah, re re um, may Allah hasten his reappearance. But who was Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi? Even though he is known throughout the whole world as a man that changed and impacted humanity, we know so much about his life as a prophet. But what about beforehand? What was his early life like? His childhood? <coughs> who were his parents? And even when his mission started, what sort of obstacles came in his pathway? Who helped him and aided him? Who were his enemies? What was his main mission and what did he want to give mankind that he was remembered for eternity? We'll be discussing this and a lot more with Sayyid Dr. Aman Akshwani, Sayyid Dr. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum as wa rahmatullah. How have you been? How are your travels? Very been? well, very well. Thanks. Congratulations uh, to everybody on this blessed week, the week of the birth of the Holy Prophet, peace be upon his family. And of course, we must not forget the week of the birth of Imam al-Sadiq alayhi salam, exactly. which inshallah we'll discuss tomorrow. Inshallah. If you'd like to call in with a question for the doctor, please call us on 0203 515 or alternatively you could text us or whatsapp us on the, uh, the number provided below the screen also tomorrow there will be a show at 9 p.m to commemorate and celebrate the birth of imam sadiq alayhi salam doctor salam alaikum wa alaikum as -salam. how have you been how's your travels been alhamdulillah very well mashallah so people say a lot about rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam um, and they'll say that we should commemorate, we shouldn't commemorate. There's a split of opinion here. From your research and your opinions, what do you think about um, uh, such a topic? Well, you do find that recently in the, in the Muslim world, this has emerged. This really was not a non-issue for over a thousand years when it came to the Mawlid of the Holy Prophet peace be upon him and his family, wherever you'd go in the world, you'd find that that would be a week of celebration. Mm -hmm. And irrespective of whether you came from a Shia or a Sunni background, you are raised honoring the week of his birth, honoring the day of his birth. And the honoring, of course, has different methods. Naturally, you find that there would be some who would honor the day of the birth of the Holy Prophet, peace be upon his family, out of recognition mm -hmm. that it's a day in which God's blessings were sent upon mankind. In the Quran, there are certain days that are called the days of Allah. If you look within the Holy Quran, it's mentioned even in the story of Moses. Remember the days of Allah. Remind them of the days of Allah. These days of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are days in which there was immense blessings which were sent down on the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him and his family. So with these days, days of remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his blessings, you find that the greatest blessings for every Muslim is the day of the birth of the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him and his family. If you went to the Ottoman Empire or the Seljuk Empire or the Safawid Empire or the Boyid Empire, or the Fatimid Empire, irrespective of whether they have inclinations to Shia, Sunni, Sufi, Ash'ari, whatever their inclinations, the Mawlid was a joyous occasion. Now you found that it was only in the last 150, 200 years that suddenly with the writings of the likes of Muhammad bin Abdul Wahhab, mm -hmm. that there were people who began to doubt whether this would be a day of celebration. So be it, in the opinion of some that the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, his family was born on the 12th of Rabi' al -Awwal, or in the opinion of others that he was born on the 17th of Rabi' al -Awwal, everybody in one way or the other would gather at each other's houses, mm -hmm. do their dhikr of the Holy Prophet's name and the name of his family, constant salawat on Muhammad and al-Muhammad, exchange gifts with one another. And it's interesting how that movement of Abdul Wahhab, which he felt was a reformist movement, is a movement that now has permeated into certain circles who constantly talk about the fact that the birth of the Holy Prophet and celebration of it, they call it a bid'ah. 
They say that the celebration of the birth of the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, is a bid'ah. Mm -hmm. Why? Because they say the Prophet himself did not celebrate his own birth. If you want to open the door of bid'ah, you want to open the door of innovations, I'm surprised by those who want to open that door. Because if you want to open that door, there are many innovations that came from people who lived after the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon his family, on areas which were either prohibited by the Prophet, they allowed, mm -hmm. or areas which were allowed by the Prophet, they Forbid. prohibited. Mm -hmm. And if they innovated something, what was interesting is normally when you hear innovation, you would think innovation in religion, how could someone go against the Nas, the, oh, you know, yes. the Prophet, peace be upon his family, mm -hmm. seen as speaking on behalf of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You can't prohibit that which he has allowed or allow that which is prohibited, but you have numerous occasions in which personalities who lived after the Prophet, peace be upon his family, yes. started to introduce innovations and they called mm -hmm. them bid'ah hasana, for example, a good innovation. Mashallah. So when someone now wants to open that can of worms, you're now, you know, you're going into an arena in which we can pick out a lot of innovations. For us, we recognize that the day of a birth of a prophet of God is either mentioned by Allah as a day of blessing mm -hmm. or the prophet mentions it as a day of blessing. Let me give you an example in the Quran. John the Baptist and Prophet Jesus alayhi salam. So Prophet Yahya and Prophet Isa alayhi salam. They're both mentioned within the Holy Quran. Mm -hmm. If you notice, with one of them, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Peace be upon him the day he was born. Salamun alayhi yawma walid. With another of them, he, say, he mentions himself by saying, Salamun alayhi yawma walid Peace be upon me the day I was born. If the day of the birth of somebody is not a day for us to celebrate, then why would true prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have the mention of the day of their mawlid, because yes. the word wulid mm -hmm. or wulidtu is mentioned with both. Yes. Salamun alayhi yawma wulid. Mm -hmm. Salamun alayhi yawma wulidtu. If it's not a day of celebration for us, why would true prophets of God say, peace be upon me the day I was born? Yes. Or Allah say, peace be upon the day he was born. So when it comes to the celebration of the birth of the Prophet, Sunni and Shia did not have an issue with this for over a thousand years. Mm -hmm. Rather, it's the Wahhabi Salafi movement that is the mm -hmm. one that, listen, that's, that's one that doesn't mind destroying the heritage of the life of the Holy Oof. Prophet. Peace be upon his family in terms of where he lived, in terms of where his grandchildren are buried. That's they don't nice. mind destroying all of these things. What's left with the Mawlid then? But that's alhamdulillah, true. until today, there are millions who remember the birth of the Prophet, peace mm -hmm. be upon his family. If you look, for example, um, in Sudan, for example, uh, your WhatsApp. If you look, for example, in Egypt, for example. Mm -hmm. If you look, for example, Iraq. You look, for example, in Iran, Lebanon, Bahrain. You have millions who come together in Rabi al Awal to remember the greatest personality to have ever lived on the face of this earth. Mm -hmm. So, alhamdulillah, it will never be stopped. And the Qur'an also, there are occasions where you find within the Holy Qur'an, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talking, for example, in chapter 7 verse 157. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim falladhina amanu bihi wa azaruhu wa nasaruhu wa tabi'u al-nur alladhi unzila ma'ahu. As for those who believe in the Holy Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him and his family. And then the Qur'an mentions, and those who honor him. Amanu bihi. Azaruhu, Nasaruhu, those who believe in him, those who honor him, those who help his message, yes, and those who follow the light mm -hmm. that came with him, these are the successful ones. Ascent. So you find when the Quran tells us those who believe in the Prophet Muhammad is not enough, mm -hmm. you can honor him. There are many ways in which you can honor the Holy Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him and his family. Of the ways in which you can honor him is by having a lecture. Ascent. On the day of his birth. Why not? As in what does our community do in the 17th Rabi' al -Awal? When they say to us that you people are the people of Bid'ah. <laughs> you're the people of Bid'ah for example. This is what yes. we hear all the time. When we hear all the time that we are the people of Bid'ah. I reply by saying what are we doing in our mosques that's a Bid'ah. Yes. On the 17th Rabi' al -Awal, we are trying to listen to a lecture. 
Yes. On the Sunnah of the Holy Prophet, peace be upon his family. Exactly. On the Quran. Mm. On the teachings of the Ahlul Bayt, alayhi salam. Where in that? When the Quran and the Hadith all tell us about the importance of seeking knowledge. 17th Rabi' al awwal 18th Rabi' al awwal 27th Rabi' al awwal yes. Whether it's Muharram, whether it's Safar. Every day is the day in which you should seek knowledge. But because that day is the day in which we remember his birth, that person who comes to our, our community and says, you Shia, or goes towards the Sunni community and says, you people who are celebrating the Mawlid, this is all a bid'ah, mm -hmm. or a bid'ah. So I said, no, we're sitting down, we're listening to a lecture on the Prophet. Peace be upon his family. And tomorrow we can listen. And the day after we can listen. But because on this day, we remember it's one of the days of Allah. Yes. Ayyam Allah is not something to be mm -hmm. looked at nonchalantly. The days of Allah are days in which God sent his blessings upon mankind. Yeah, yeah sent. Said I've got loads of questions. I'm really excited because obviously Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is a, a dear character to all of us. Sure. But I'm sure there's a lot that you want to discuss as well. So is there anything before we kick off with my questions that you'd like to talk about? No, I say, I, I say something of the utmost importance and that is that many times the Shia are accused or are told that you don't respect the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon his family, as you do others. Mm -hmm. Or you don't mention him enough. Mm -hmm. Or that you mention, for example, Ali and Hussein more than you mention him. Yes. And we reply by saying, first and foremost, nobody in the Muslim world honors the birth and the death of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon his family, like the school of Ahlul Bayt. Assent. Nobody. Assent. Even if there are Muslims today who are remembering the Mawlid mm -hmm. of the Prophet, they won't remember the day he dies in Safar. Mm -hmm. We have lectures on the day of his birth, the day of his death. Those who, for example, say to us, you don't have lectures on his life. Yes. I myself, for example, have uh, the biography of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and Assent. I haven't even finished it. Wow. And I've done 27 lectures. MashaAllah. There are others in Urdu and Farsi who have done up mm -hmm. to 200 lectures on his life. You find at the same time, no congregation in the world, when they hear the name Muhammad, will all in one voice say, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad loudly like us. But if someone wants to say to us, you mention Imam Ali, for example, a lot. Mm -hmm. To us, Imam Ali, whatever he narrates, is the best path of understanding the Holy Prophet, peace be upon his family. If other schools in Islam, for example, say, Abu Huraira narrates, Aisha narrates, Anas narrates. They mention always mm -hmm. Anas, Abu Huraira, Abdullah bin Umar, Aisha. I can easily turn around and say, hold on, you mention them more than the Prophet. They'll say, no, we're narrating what they <laughs> said from the Prophet. Likewise, yes. if I mention Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib, salam, I'm simply narrating what Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib salam, is telling me of what's happened in the life of the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him and his family. Then you were talking about narrations and, and, and uh, history. The Prophet's birth, was it ever foretold beforehand? Was it ever prophesied? I mean, was there any indication that there was to be a coming of, you know, the final Prophet, the greatest Prophet of all? Well, if you look within the, look within the Holy Quran, in chapter uh, 61, verse number 6, you find that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks to us about Prophet Jesus alayhi salam. And when he speaks to us about Prophet Jesus alayhi salam, he mentions how Prophet Jesus talks of Ahmed who is to come after him. And so this gives us the indication that Christ had spoken about a figure who would come after him, who would be seen as the spirit of truth. And that's why it's no surprise for any of us when we hear that in the Bible, mm -hmm. there would be the mentioning of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon his family. Now, some may argue that, you know what, that's not the spirit of truth. They, mm -hmm. Some refer to him as, for example, saying that that is the Holy Spirit who he's referring to. But we know one of the titles of the Holy Prophet, peace be upon his family, is Al-Sadiq, yes? Yes. When we call him Al-Sadiq, what do we mean when we say Al-Sadiq? The truthful one. So if Jesus, within the chapter of John, for example, mm -hmm. mentions that after me will come the spirit of truth, Muslims are not surprised because in Surah 61 verse 6, Prophet Jesus mentions mm -hmm. that after me will come Ahmed. Sometimes in the Quran, Allah refers to the Prophet as Ahmed. As is mentioned yes. here, Christ mentions that in the same way the Torah spoke about me, I tell you of Ahmed. And sometimes Allah refers to him as Muhammad. Yes. Sometimes Allah refers to him as 
Taha, sometimes mm-hmm. Yasin. Yes. Muzzammil, Muddathir, and so on. So you find that that mention is there. Now, whether someone can find that mention in the Bible today, it's, n- it's not necessarily so clear. Mm, I understand. Yeah. So uh, we had uh, you know, the, the foretelling of the Prophet coming down uh, and, and him being born. And then also, what about a bit more on his family, his parents, his tribe? I mean, were they preparing for him? And who were they? Who were his parents? Who were the Bani Hashim at that time in Mecca? Yeah, well, his family are seen as the as having one of the most important positions. Um, first and foremost, they are the descendants of Abraham. Many non-Muslims mm-hmm. do not know that the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, his family is a descendant of Prophet Ibrahim alayhis salam. They think that the Prophet Muhammad, for example, is this random Arab. <laughs> And Abraham's lineage is one which is blessed by God. In the Bible, there isn't just the praise of Isaac's lineage. There's Mm -hmm. the praise of the 12 princes from the line of Ishmael. Mm -hmm. And so the Holy Prophet, peace be upon his family, is related to Prophet Ibrahim through Ismail. And his grandfather, Abdul Muttalib, is known as the custodian of the Kaaba. The Kaaba, mm. the black cube shaped monument that many Muslims and non Muslims will look at yes. in Mecca. The one who protected it was given the highest of respect. And the Arabs used to respect the house of God, although tainted it with idols and yes. idol worship, with the main idols being, for example, um, Allah, Uzza, Manat, Hubal. These are all manifestations, one may say, of God's attributes. We say polytheism is not that you just believe in more than one God. It's also putting images to one God. I see. I see. You know, because sometimes someone says there is a group of people who should be seen as being monotheist. Why? Because they say that they believe in one God. Okay, yes, they believe mm-hmm. in one God. But if they put images to God, then they are ca- classified as polytheists. Polytheist. Now, when you're looking at Mecca at the time, his grandfather, Abdul Muttalib, mm-hmm. respected by all. And is part of a group who are known as the Hanifs. Okay. The Hanifs literally is translated as the upright. Those who are following the monotheism of Abraham. They have not gone to idol worship. I would rather say a better translation of Hanif is those who stand up against the tide. Okay. Or those who are not affected by the peer pressure of the time. You see, sometimes a person may be affected by peer pressure in their time. Mm -hmm. And what that means is everybody worships something you follow. You don't think for yourself, how can I bow mm-hmm. down to something I can create? Something I could smash with an axe? <laughs> something I can kick? Yes. No, if everybody is doing it, I do it. You ask them, mm-hmm. why do you do it? Says that, for example, it's a culture for me. Mm-hmm. No, no. Is it a religion or a culture? No, it's a culture. Something that I cannot leave because my parents will be unhappy. <coughs> <laughs> Religion is not something which I follow because mom and dad are happy if I follow it. Mm -hmm. Religion should be something that I'm following because I believe that it answers cosmological, metaphysical, psychological and ethical issues that I have. I as a human being come across uh, cosmological or metaphysical dilemmas and I Mm -hmm. want an answer. Some may find their answer only in science. Some may find their answer in faith. Some may find a wonderful combination of the two. And... What you therefore have is that Abdul Muttalib alayhi salam, descendant of Abraham, grandfather of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon his family. A man by the name of Khuwaylid, father of Khadija, later mm-hmm. the wife of the Prophet Muhammad. Abu Talib, the uncle of the Holy Prophet, peace yes. be upon his family. Yes. And a few others are known as the Hanifs. Hanifs. They are not tainted by the idol worshipping mm-hmm. Meccans. Mm-hmm. And so the famous story in the Quran. Where God reminds the Arabs that remember the favors I bestowed upon you mm-hmm. when the Prophet Muhammad first announced his mission that some of them are, are, are causing distress to him, are rude to him, are arrogant towards him. Yes. 
And God reminds them, Alam tara kayfa fa'ala rabbuka bi ashab al-feel. Have you not seen what your Lord did to the people or the companions of the elephant? Because Abdul yeah. Muttalib, grandfather of the Prophet Muhammad, his brother, family, with a class and a calmness, mm -hmm. approaches Abraha who wants to destroy the Kaaba. With Abraha saying, what's your demands? He says, just return my flock back to me. He says to him, wait, I'm going to destroy your God's house. Mm -hmm. That's all you're concerned about? He goes, yes, I protect them. That house has got its protector. He'll yes. look after you. <laughs> And Inshallah. that, therefore, is the grandfather, a man of unbelievable faith in his Lord, mm -hmm. a man not touched by idol worship. Mm -hmm. His father, the Prophet Muhammad's father, Abdullah, his mother, Amina, are of the Hanifs. Polytheism does not affect his parents whatsoever. The Shia school is clear. Mm -hmm. Amina, mother of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon his family, born pure, Lived pure, died pure, resurrected in the highest of heavens. Ascent. Abdullah, father of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon his family. Born pure, lived pure, died pure, resurrected in the highest of the heavens. Ascent. None of this believe that my parents are in hell, I'll pray for them mm -hmm. or I'll look after them, I'll intercede for them. No, 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 no. Mm -hmm. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon his family, his parents are pure believers in one God, never polytheism has touched them. Ascent. Sometimes you read in the ziyar of Imam al-Hussein alayhi salam, famous line which we've all recited. Ashhadu annaka kunta nooran fil aslaab al-shamikha wal arham al-mutahara lam tunajjiska al-jahiliya bi anjasiha wa lam tulbiska min mudlahim mati thiyabiha It's very clear within that ziyar that we are of the belief in the pure line Ignorance, polytheism, impurities have not touched that purest of lineages. I'm not no. going to say the offshoots of that lineage are not going to be affected. His mm -hmm. uncle Abu Lahab is of those who was affected. Yes. But in terms of his parents, and it's not an easy beginning for the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon his family. Mm -hmm. You know, people may imagine those who have not read anything about his biography that this man is brought up in the lap of luxury. On the contrary, you know, his, mm -hmm. his dad passes away while his mom's pregnant. Wow. And his mom passes away a few years into his yeah. life. And he's raised by his grandfather mm -hmm. and then by his uncle Abu Talib who has yes. a monumental effect on his life. Yeah. Could you talk a little bit more about the death? I mean, how old were they? And how do you think this would have impacted uh, Rasulullah? I mean, we know that he had a very soft spot for the orphans. Yes. Uh, do, you think, do you think this is why? Because he grew up as an I orphan? think it's a great question. And the Quran mentions that we not find you an orphan and we sheltered you, O Muhammad. True? True. In Surah al duha Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us of our responsibilities Islamically towards the mm -hmm. orphans in this world because our Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was born an orphan. Yes. But I'll tell you what. When your mom dies and your dad dies, the biggest blessing you can have is having a dad-like figure in Abu Talib and a mother-like figure in Fatima bint Asad. Awesome. Believe you me, Abu Talib and Fatima bint Asad, the way the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon his family, talks about them. Mm -hmm. My backbone, my pillar of strength, she was like a mom to me in tears when Fatima bint Asad dies. Because he knows Fatima bint Asad has four sons, yes. Talib, Aqil, Ja'far and Ali, Ali, son of Abu Talib, but the way she looks after the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon his family, is unique. Mm -hmm. So when you've lost your parents, it's as if God says to you, don't worry. I know you're being tested, but just look at the type of people I'm going to give you who will shelter you, who will care for you, who will be compassionate towards you, who will be a source of love towards you. And the shame is, that many Muslims in the world today have no idea on the impact of someone like Fatima bint Asad on the life of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon his family. This lady mm -hmm. is one of the ladies of heaven. And sadly, there are Muslims in the world today who believe Abu Talib, his uncle, died as a disbeliever. Unfortunately. Believe you me, you can go around the Muslim world today, ask them about Abu Talib. They won't have a bad word to say about him. Mm -hmm. But Muslims, in many cases, don't use this. <laughs> Unfortunately not, no. No. 
Oh, there is a hadith that says that the Abu Talib burns at the bottom of hell. So, okay, that's it. That's all I need to know. Okay, tell me what in his life dictated to you that such a narration is plausible and is one to actually believe in. But I'm not surprised. Umayyad and Abbasid pens what they do. Especially Abbasid pens. Yes. And the hatred they had against the sons of Abu Talib and the lineage of Abu Talib. But those two had an influence on his life. That I'm not surprised when they die how much grief he displays. Yep. Hassan, Hassan. Talking more on the Prophet's life, I mean, most Muslims would have studied the actual prophethood which started over 40 years old and after. I mean, we unfortunately don't discuss much about pre-40, his teenage life, um, him as a young adult, uh, his employment, or you know, his habits or things like that. Um, would you like to discuss a little bit on, on that? Well, first and foremost, what's wonderful about him before he announces any prophethood or discusses any revelation is that he has two titles, Sadiq and Amin, the truthful and the trustworthy. There is nobody in the whole of Mecca in the first 40 years of the Prophet Muhammad's life who could point at a black spot or a black dot in the whole of his life. Mm -hmm. You know, and that is something amazing. Any human being can look at another human being and pinpoint a moment in their youth or in their teenage years where they could turn around and say, well, that wasn't the most pleasant of behaviors. Mm -hmm. That was rude. That's uncharacteristic and so on. But what's amazing is that in his early years, people wouldn't even call him Muhammad. Nor would people call him Ahmed. People would come towards him. There's the Sadiq. There's the Amin. Mm -hmm. And it really gives you an understanding of what defines a Muslim. Not their prayers and their fasts, but their trustworthiness and their truthfulness. So you see in his youth, there's a truthfulness, a trustworthiness. There's a level of maturity which I think travel brings. Mm -hmm. I've always found the most narrow-minded humans on this earth are the ones who don't travel much. And I won't say this is a case for everyone that I've met. But a lot of people I've met who've hardly traveled. Very narrow-minded approach sometimes. Mm -hmm. Insular. Even on the verge of arrogance or ignorance on some cases. I think travel plays a monumental role in his life. His uncle Abu Talib takes him traveling at a young age to meet others, to get to know others. I think mm -hmm. he doesn't just learn about God through his own prism and lens, but rather uh, looks at God even by meeting the odd monk here, the mm -hmm. odd priest here, mm -hmm. the odd polytheist here. I think if you, if you meet people of different faiths and different backgrounds in your life, it brings a lot more thought and reflection. His wife said that Khadija السلام, says in the reports I used to receive about him when he, peace be upon him, his family would be on a journey. There'd be many a time he'd go and meditate. Mm. He'd go and sit and reflect. Many of us, the importance of meditation is not really there in many of our discussions. You don't find many who discuss the importance of taking time out. Whereas he himself, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon his family, would constantly say an hour of reflection wow. is greater than 70 Years of worship. There are many Muslims who live lives, very strict legal lives, mm -hmm. very strict lives of ritual, but little reflection. And so in his youth, he travels. In his youth, he meets people of different faiths. In his youth, if he sees that somebody has been oppressed he then is part of that league of justice known as Hilf al mm -hmm. Um, A group of Meccans who come together to speak out for the rights of people in their business transactions and to avoid people having that feeling of being scammed when they used to I come see. to Mecca. Yeah. In his youth, he gets married Sorry. in his mid-twenties. And he gets married to this immaculate personality. You know... Khadija is his best wife, 
Khadija is his greatest wife. Khadija is on a class which is different to anybody in her time or after her time. In terms of the impact and in terms of the closeness she has with the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon his family. Never does she hurt his family. Never does she go at war with his family. Never does she raise her voice against him. Mm -hmm. Never does she spy on him. Never does she call his breath a breath which doesn't smell nice. Never does she bring him a headache because of her erratic behavior in the community. I'm not surprised when they say four women of Jannah, Khadija, Fatima, Maryam, Asya. Mm. They're a class above. Ascent. And he marries this lady and she has a monumental impact on his life as well as being a backbone for him. And I would say front bone as well. You know, many times we say <laughs> this person's a great backbone. Yes. But if one can use a term like front bone, Mm -hmm. You know how sometimes I say they, he's backbiting. Someone front bites you sometimes. Slandering. Slandering. But some people are a backbone. Some no, are front bone. Meaning that she's willing to stand up with him, in front of him, especially in the early years of his prophethood. And she, of course, gives him Fatima. Yes. Yep. I sense, I sense. There is viewers. We're going to take a short break now. But please join us back after the break for a lengthy discussion on the birth of the Prophet and we will be joined by a special guest as well so please stay tuned and we'll see you after the break Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh Dearest respected viewers and welcome back to Live in London on this auspicious occasion of the Prophet's birthday Sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi If you'd like to call in and you have a question for Sayyidah Ahmad please call us on 0203 515 or alternatively you can use the WhatsApp number provided at the bottom of the screen and you can send your questions there Sayyid, we were discussing uh, the Prophet's early life um, and, you know, uh, where he was going through and, and the obstacles and how he was as a character. It was very difficult for someone of that character to keep, to be so truthful and to be uh, so trustworthy in a time where Arabia was known as the time of Jahiliyyah. Can you uh, discuss uh, some of the practices of Jahiliyyah at that time and what the climate was like for Rasulullah Sure, that period of... Uh... Jahiliyyah is normally known as the, uh, the period of uh, ignorance. Yes. And a period of ignorance can affect a society at any stage. It's not just one period of Jahiliyyah. There could be a period of Jahiliyyah in Arabia. Uh, there's a period of Jahiliyyah in the world today. There's a period of Jahiliyyah <laughs> everywhere in the world. So Ascent. Ascent. we can't just limit Jahiliyyah to Arabia. Uh, even the Quran mentions the Jahiliyyah to the Ula. Mm -hmm. The first Jahiliyyah, and Imam al-Baqir asks, why does God say Jahiliyyah al-Ula, the first? He said, like, there's going to be a second, there's going to be a third, there's going to be other periods of ignorance. And there were some unbelievably ignorant individuals within that society. And ignorance can be, can be looked at in two ways. Students of mantiq, logic, at the Hawza, will tell you that when we look at Jahl, ignorance. Mm. There is Jahl Murakkab and there is Jahl Basit. There is an ignorance which is compound mm -hmm. and an ignorance which is basic. The ignorance which is compound is a lot harder to eradicate. You see, I may have a basic ignorance. Mm -hmm. My basic ignorance, for example, is if you were to ask me questions now about um, life in Singapore. I'm ignorant of that. I don't know. I'd love to find out how life mm -hmm. is there. Or life, for example, in Romania. Mm -hmm. I don't know. But that's basic ignorance. When, for example, there is an area of knowledge, it's not your expertise. Yes. You don't have much information on it, but you'd love to learn more. Ascent. 
compound ignorance is that person, it's very difficult for them to admit they're ignorant. I see. They go with the flow of the ignorance of their time uh-huh. and don't see any issue with that ignorance. Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam says, there are four types of people. Mm-hmm. There are those who know and know that they know. Yes. There are those who know but don't know mm-hmm. that they, they know. know. There are those who don't know and know mm-hmm. that they don't know. And then there are those who don't, don't know and don't know that they don't know. <laughs> Did you they're, get that or no? They're the dangerous ones. Cameraman, can you repeat that? <laughs> okay. What's Imam Ali alayhi salam saying? There are those who know and know that they know. Mm-hmm. There are those who know but don't know that they know. Mm-hmm. There are those who don't know and know, they that, know they that they don't, don't know. know. Yes. Okay. They don't know but they know. Then there mm-hmm. are those who don't know and don't they know, know that, that they, they don't, don't know. know. Yes. And... That arrogance had permeated within the, the society of the time that you had um, people who were normal in seeing, for example, a, uh, a, a baby being buried alive. Quran mentions that of the most barbaric acts mm-hmm. these ignorant Arabs used to undertake was burying their daughters alive. Quran mentions, وَإِذَا الْمَوْؤُودَةُ سُئِلَتْ بِأَيِّ ذَنْبٍ قُتِلَتْ the female baby will ask on the day of judgment, for what reason was I killed? Why was I buried alive? The Arabs would find an embarrassment <coughs> in having a daughter born to them. And I wish that was the only period of ignorance until today in some of our societies. Oh, yeah. If for example, someone, let's say she gives birth to a girl. a girl. She gives birth to that girl. You'll find that there'll be some members of the family saying, when are you going to have a boy? Yes. Okay, gives birth to a second girl. When you're going to have a boy, it gives birth to a third girl. When you're going to have a boy, as if the birth of that daughter is a form of sadness for them. And the most ignorant society, no doubt, is that society which looks at a blessing of God like a baby and wants to not just shows unhappiness. Quran mentions, وَإِذَا بُشِّرَ أَحَدَهُمْ بِالْأُنْثَى ظَلَّ وَجْهَهُ مُسْوَدًّا وَهُوَ كَظِيمٌ When one of them is given news of the birth of a Female, their faces darken with anger and there's a sense of grief. Mm-hmm. And they'd find it normal to bury their daughters alive. Likewise, you'd find, for example, other acts of ignorance circumambulating the Kaaba yeah. naked. naked. Yes. You'd find intoxication mm-hmm. being a norm for many of them. To the extent that the Quran has to mention to some of these personalities who become Muslim that, ya am, uh, that you know, oh, you who believe, don't approach salah while you're in a state of intoxication. intoxication. Mm-hmm. You look at any society, intoxicants being a norm, murder, oh. tribal fights with one another, feuds oh, that yeah. last for years, blood becoming normal to shed. Mm-hmm. So the Prophet Muhammad grows up in this, but. He also highlights something to us. Don't blame your environment for why you're not religious. We live in London. I guarantee you there are people in London of the Muslim community who are more religious than their cousins back in Muslim countries. True. I guarantee you True. that there are people in London, in America, in Canada, in Australia who are more knowledgeable than some of their cousins back in the Middle East, for example. I guarantee you there are people who are living in the West whose faith is stronger than some of their family members who are living East. in the, religious, con- in the mm. religious majority, for example, Muslim countries. Why? Because our Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon his family, made it clear to us. R- environment is not an excuse for your lack of religiosity. Don't say I'm not religious because I live in a non-religious country. Mm-hmm. Because if anybody could have been affected by his peers, yes. by his environment, it's him. Mm. Let's say he's a uh, Special human being, let's say. Okay. You find, for example, Uthman bin Mad'un. Mm-hmm. You find, for example, Ja'far, son of Abu Talib. Yes. Personalities like that. Lived in a time of alcohol, never mm-hmm. drunk. Yes. Lived in a time of shirk, never committed polytheism. Never lied, mm-hmm. never committed adultery. Mm-hmm. Could have easily been affected by the peer pressures of their time. Yes. But I mentioned Uthman bin Mad'un and Ja'far, son of Abu Talib, because Imam Ali alayhi salam and Imam al-Baqir both specifically point these two out as personalities mm-hmm. who were living in the most ignorant period but were not affected by 
what's around them. There's a message to all of us that society may lead you into a direction where you have to act certain acts to be cool. Mm -hmm. There are certain people who listen to some obscenities in the world of music. Unfortunately. Because they have to keep up with their classmates because if mm -hmm. they're not listening to those musicians, they're seen as being not cool. Mm -hmm. There are some who take drugs to be part of a cool group. There are some who drink alcohol to be part of a cool group. But the Hanifs, your Abd al Muttalibs, your Abu Talibs, your Fatima bint Asads, mm -hmm. your Sayyidah Khadijas, your Holy Prophet, peace be upon his family, your Imam Ali's, these were a group of people who stood up against the tide of their time. Mm -hmm. And that's a lesson for us all. Excellent. You were mentioning about um, burying the daughters. I mean, I thought Arabs were known to have more than one wives. Uh, a lot would even uh, you know, um, say that the Prophet had many many wives um what was what was the the tradition behind this and those who actually point fingers at rasulullah saying that you know one woman couldn't satisfy him or you know now uh, you know uh, claiming uh, certain things that they shouldn't towards rasulullah um what was the reason behind such marriages well i think firstly we have to make clear not every single girl that was born was killed yes but part of the sign of ignorance is when the death of one girl mm -hmm. doesn't bring any sadness into you. I you know, see. whether it's one girl or two girls, a thousand mm -hmm. girls. You kill one human being, it's as if you've killed the whole of humanity. humanity. So, you have the Arabs killing their daughters because A, they don't believe they'll help them in any war. Mm -hmm. B, not help in business. See, she might end up running away with someone of a tribe they hate. <laughs> it's absurd, but some would do that. Because remember, when you're living by Bedouin tribal law, you don't have any care anymore. Mm -hmm. It's the tribal law that's more important to you. In the Quran, God talks of the Bedouin tribal's uh, leaders and their ignorance. He mentions the Arab, not the Arab, the Arab. Mm -hmm. Now, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon his family, with his own daughter Fatima, sets an example. Fatima is the mother of her father. He stands up when he walks past, mm. when, he's, when Fatima enters the room. He sends his salams as he walks past Fatima's house. Fatima becomes the central axis of one of the most mystical moments in his life, known as the Hadith al-Kisa, or the incident Excellent. of the cloak. Mm -hmm. His wife Khadija, the lady who raised him, such as Fatima bint Asad, yes. Um Ayman, Fidda, mm -hmm. you know, all of these, Asma bint Umais. Those who try and say, but he's a man who married so many women, is disrespectful. If it's, for example, some of our Christian brethren say that Muhammad is a man of lust. Oh, Interesting, I've seen prophets in the Bible who've married a, a few more than the <laughs> Prophet Muhammad. But secondly, the Prophet Muhammad's one love in his life was Khadija. Yes. And he marries Khadija when he's 25 and they're together for 26 years till she dies. Inshallah. 25 plus 26 is 51. Mm -hmm. In those 26 years, it's the prime of your life. Yes. The prime of your strength. Mm -hmm. Surely you would think of marrying a second or a third or a fourth or a fifth if your prime concern was your lust or fulfilling your sexual desires. But he will not marry anyone while he's with Khadija. Awesome. The other marriages then come, yes, some are for legal reasons, some are for mm -hmm. political tribal alliances. Some are for social reasons which have to be looked at. But when you're looking at the marriage to Sayyidah Khadija alayhi mm -hmm. had the Prophet Muhammad been a man as they try to accuse him of lust and a man no. who all he thinks about is woman, then why between the age of 25 till the age of 51 would you not marry a second? Don't marry six. Don't marry seven. Marry a second. Mm -hmm. Mind mm -hmm. you, the Arabs in his time, 10 was a norm. Ten. As in when the verse came down about marrying four, these guys were in a bit of shock because 10 to 4 was a difficult one. So it was actually reduced. It, it was, was reduced, just... yeah. Wow. Well. You know, the Arab, you give, you know, give him a bit of camel milk and some dates <laughs> in the heat. MashaAllah. You know, he's, uh, he's quite a stallion. And, and I think what happens is that um, the Prophet Muhammad also makes it clear that this marrying 10 wives, this not honoring the rights of your wives, you know, mm -hmm. Surah 58 of the Quran is called the pleading woman or the one who pleads to God because of the way mm. some women were being treated barbarically by their husbands or very rudely by their husbands. So there is a reform process that takes place. 
And I'm not going to sit here and deny that, look, the Prophet Muhammad marrying nine wives or ten wives, or some will look at that and say, well, how could that be the case? But I think it's important for one to also realize that with Khadija, he was not interested in anyone else. Assent. So coming back to the ignorant practices of the Arabs at that time, how did Rasulullah tackle these issues? How did he come about to bring in moral and ethical values into such a community? Well, I think what's important first and foremost is that his reputation is, mm-hmm. is you know, spotless. See what you, mean. you know, and that is fundamental. You can't come and preach to a group of people when your rep is not good. Mm-hmm. Um, and so when he's known as Sadiq and Amin, even his enemies used to leave their deposits and trusts with him. Yeah. You know, on the night of yes. his migration from mm-hmm. Mecca to Medina, he tells Ali that one of your responsibilities is to make sure that you... You know, there's certain deposits we have. Mm-hmm. And those deposits were some deposits with some of the enemies. Yes. Return them back towards their owners. So, mm-hmm. first thing that helps him. Second is that he's from the people. Mm-hmm. Allah sent to those people mm-hmm. a prophet from amongst, amongst them. Yeah. They've seen him walk the streets. They've seen him yes. eat their food. So, that's fundamental. Three practices what he preaches. Mm-hmm. Fundamental. Worst thing in the eyes of Allah is not to practice that which you preach or to say that which you do not act. And number four, he has companions alongside him who are pivotal. You know, people who are willing to put their neck on the line. Literally, in the case of Yasser and Sumayya, the the parents of Ammar. Literally, in the case of the likes of Bilal who are tortured. Literally, in the likes of Ja'far al-Tayyar who's willing to put his neck on the line, travel to Africa in the most difficult circumstances Mm -hmm. to protect the religion of Islam in its infancy. Literally in the likes of the body of Ali ibn Abi Talib on the night of migration. Mm -hmm. So all of these are pivotal in his success. Ascent, ascent. And uh, also, one thing we we don't touch on, or not we haven't touched on yet, one thing that was important about the Prophet's life and him being such a pivotal character in the community was he was also infallible. Now some argued that his infallibility came later, some say he's not infallible. Could you clear this argument up of infallibility of the Prophet? When did it actually start? Um, was he born with it or did he attain it? And, and, how, and how did he carry on? There's two words which are often seen in theological texts when looking at the, the concept of the error-free person. One is the word Lutf, Mm -hmm. the other is the word Qudra. Lutf, grace from God. Qudra, ability of someone to do something, for example. Infallibility is a grace bestowed by God upon His chosen creation. Be they in the cradle, in the case of Jesus, be they in their later ages, in the case of Moses or Noah or Abraham. Qudra is the ability to sin. The choice is there, but you wouldn't out of respect of God. So the Prophet Muhammad is not a robot walking around the earth Mm -hmm. where he... It's restricted. Restricted that he can't sin. No. Mm-hmm. Sin can be in front of him, but he chooses not to. Ascent. Sets an example for us. Ascent. When we say he is the uswa, mm-hmm. the exemplar, is because in the barrage of abuse, barrage of hate, barrage of rudeness, you find the man's morals stand out. Mm-hmm. To us, he's... Error free from the day he's born till the day he dies. Ascent. In revelation and outside of revelation. Mm-hmm. If the Prophet Jesus السلام, can say from the cradle, I am the servant of Allah, he has given me the book, given me wisdom, mm-hmm. made me a prophet. So Ascent. are you telling me the Prophet Muhammad from the day he's born cannot have that bestowed upon him? Exactly. By Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Mm-hmm. But once again, as I say, the Arabs themselves call him Sadiq and Ameen. Yes. The highest traits morally in the human being mm-hmm. are justice, truthfulness, trustworthiness. Ascent. I defy any Arab who remembers the Prophet Muhammad before the age of 40 where he's ever been adulterous, mm-hmm. idolatrous, 
Liar. <coughs> backbiter. Never. Slanderer. Never. 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 None could point. All of them would think about leaving their deposits with him. <laughs> yes. 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 You were talking about the, you know, the, the abuse and, and things that he suffered from during the time of his um, campaign. Can we use that as motivation for us today when we fight Islamophobia uh, in, in our communities and, and social media and, and places like that? How yeah. can we learn from Rasulullah? Brilliant question. I think today when we see our sisters, maybe more than us, yes. getting a barrage of hate or a barrage of abuse, Sometimes on the bus, sometimes on the train, sometimes at work. In different parts of the world. You know, we're lucky in London, it's a very cosmopolitan atmosphere. Mm -hmm. There's certain areas mm -hmm. where you get the, you know, the wrong guy on the wrong night. <laughs> just looking at them wrong. Yeah, who's just seen the barbarity of ISIS and their behavior. Yeah. Or seen one nutcase, so-called Muslim on television speaking, you know, filth. Look at the Prophet Muhammad in his early years, the amount of abuse he receives is mentioned in the Quran to the extent that Allah eventually tells him, Inna kafaynaka al mustahzi'in. There were a lot who would make fun of him. Allah protects him, but some would call him Abtar. Mm -hmm. His kids die. Who's going to continue your lineage? Imagine your kids just died and people are making fun of you. Some mm -hmm. will call him Sha'ir, you're just a poet, nothing more. Yeah. Some would call him Sahar, magician. Some would call him Kahin, soothsayer. Worse and worse, some would call him Majnoon. Wow. Insane. So when he cool. prays, some would throw feces on him. Seriously. Quran mentions, Have you seen the one who disrespects mm -hmm. our servant when he's in prayer? He used to throw feces on his face. But always the Quran mentions, that, that you are a man of the most sublime morals. And the Quran mentions, If you were hard-hearted or you were severe, they would have turned away from you. Mm -hmm. It's that soft-heartedness, that the morals. And today I believe Islam has become too rigid, a legal, theological, only slanted, religion in terms of its followers and I believe that that spiritual ethical dimension is more what was postulated and what brought success to the message of the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon his family we have people in our communities in prayer they're amazing mm -hmm. they fast in Ramadan but some of their akhlaq towards one another leaves a lot to be desired mm -hmm. thuggish um, loud abrasive ill-mannered you know, always judgmental, mm -hmm. always looking to pick the odd argument, always thinking they're better than others. Mm -hmm. What is it that makes the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon his family, but his soft-heartedness? You know, you could throw trash at him in the morning, he'll come and visit the lady when she's ill. Mm, yes. You know, um, Abu Sufyan could be the worst towards him, but on the day of the opening of Mecca, mm -hmm. he says, you know what, he's one of the tulaqa, let him go. That's mm -hmm. it. So these are lessons which I think are fundamental for us. How to counter the Islamophobia today. That there is a lot of Islamophobia, but you'll never see the Islamophobia like what the Prophet Muhammad saw. That's it. Yep. I do believe uh, that our special guest is, is arriving now. Uh, but just before we welcome him, on, welcome him on, can you, in one sentence, say the aim of Rasulullah's mission and, and his campaign? What was it in one sentence? Uh, I would say in one sentence, completion mm -hmm. of the mission of the prophets that came to, uh, before him. And that would be? Uh, perfection of the most sublime morals of man. Ascent, this ascent. religion is about its akhlaq. Ascent. If a community loses akhlaq, that community dies. Ascent. Thank yep. you very much, uh, Doctor. And now we'd like to welcome our special guest, um, uh, Mullah Nazar, inshallah. He should be joining us now because uh, it is a Mawlud. Uh, uh, We're here to celebrate the birth of the Prophet. And inshallah, he can bless us with his voice and with his poetry. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Can we stand up or are we yeah, 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 yeah. We should be, okay. we should be able to stand. It's okay, it's okay. Assalamu alaikum. One mic. Assalamu alaikum. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Asadallah ayyamukum. Asadallah Mullah Habibi. Allah yisallimkum. Barakallah fikum. Allah yisallimkum. Ya Allah. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. How are you? Fine, thank you. I hope you haven't traveled too far to come here and join us. Alhamdulillah. From Najaf. 
ما شاء الله ما شاء الله نو نو يا الله ما شاء الله so is there anything you'd like to say to the viewers to congratulate them on this auspicious occasion bil arabi adi no problem no even in english why i can speak five languages ما شاء الله ما شاء الله when he is a resident of this country yes yeah i congratulate to the people uh, for uh, birthday of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa I remember a few days ago I was uh, in a school okay. in the morning, nine o'clock in the morning mm. uh -huh. yeah, for recitation for the uh, kids uh, and I talked about uh, the celebration of uh, Prophet Isa alayhi salam and Prophet Muhammad I uh -huh. told them no problem. Mm -hmm. Prophet Isa is one of the prophets of Ulul Azm. Okay? Oh, yes. And uh, uh, we can celebrate for him. No mm -hmm. problem. But we, c we cannot join their cel uh, celebration. Oh, I sent. No problem. He's, so he's no, no Christmas trees <laughs> at home this year? No. <laughs> uh, no problem. What, what's, what, what, what's the problem? We can, we can uh, celebrate. We can do mm -hmm. anything. But... Uh, I mean, we have wajib and we have awjab. Very true. Very true. We have that which is uh, obligatory, but that which has even more obligatory. <coughs> yes. Yeah. Which and is more important at that time. Uh, more important is our Prophet, Prophet Asant. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi oh. wa alihi wa sallam. Uh, he is Khatam al Anbiya. And uh, uh, we have to really uh, do celebration for. Uh, our prophet Asant, so Asant. that doesn't mean we don't do for for other mm -hmm. prophets Asant. so uh, most of you will know that Mullah Nazar is a very very famous poet thank and you and inshallah you have brought some poetry to share with us inshallah, inshallah. yes yes inshallah in which language four languages mashallah yeah, even even in urdu mashallah urdu bi janta mashallah so you're going to have to join the urdu <laughs> you have to be ready to join no the problem order. yeah, Khad, yeah. Khad. no problem barakallah fikum محمد أشرف الأعراب والعجم محمد خير من يمشي على قدم محمد باسط المعروف جامعة محمد صاحب الإحسان والكرم محمد تاج رسل الله قاطبة محمد صادق الأقوال والكلم محمد خبيت بالنور طينته محمد لم يزل نورا من القدم محمد خير خلق الله من مضر محمد خير رسل الله كلهم سلام صل على محمد وعلى محمد هر غم کی تدبیر علی ہے کوسر کی تفسیر علی ہے ہر غم کی تدبیر علی ہے کوسر کی تفسیر علی ہے جنت جنت کہنے بالو جنت به ہے ان کے گلی جنت به ہے ان کے گلی علی 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 دم علی علی ناد علی پر ناد علی ناد علی پر ناد علی 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 دم علی علی واه 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 نار يا هدري يا علي يا علي يا علي for forever we have to say يا علي سلام الله عليك يا سيدي يا أمير المؤمنين بلاش سلام الله language number three 
Farsi. No, it's still in order. Still in order. Still. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. You, 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 know, you know, because I believe that most of the uh, uh, people who uh, watch the English uh, mm -hmm. t uh, TV, yes. uh, they are uh, Urdu, Urdu speakers. Speaking. Oh, Urdu, Urdu speakers. Very true. Very true. Right. Very true. Let's do this. Okay. I'm here. Dam be dam ali ali pukar Har qadam ali ali pukar Dam be dam ali ali pukar Ali ke taraf gar to ek qadam barahega Das qadam zamane se khud ko aag paayega خود کو آگ پائے گا خود کو آگ پائے گا کیونکہ یہ نہیں رکھتے کسی کا اڈار دم بدم علی علی پکار ہر قدم علی علی پکار تجھ کو فاطمہ زہرائی کے دعائے مل جائے خود تیرے زیارت کو انبیاء چلے آئے انبیاء چلے آئے انبیاء چلے آئے کربلا پہج جائے تجھو ایک بار دم بدم علی علی پکا صلو علی محمد و علی محمد صلی علی محمد و علی محمد ماشاءاللہ بفور یو دو نیکس ون ایوانا سی تو اول ویورز that even in Urdu, you recite it like a professional Urdu reciter. You, I you hit the notes. I, I, you hit I, I the notes five properly. Languages, really, yeah. As in, I couldn't tell that you were an Arab reciting it. You know how to do the style properly, like a professional Urdu singer would. Masha Allah. That's, that's, that's Masha real Allah. talent. I, I, I told, very, you, I, I told you, yeah, I, I can speak five languages. Masha Allah. Yeah, so I'm Urdu janta, really. Masha Allah. Mm. Inshallah, I'll talk to you later. Inshallah. 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 Um, next one tomorrow is no no it's not the next I mean uh, you know we are uh, uh, Thursday mm -hmm. uh, night yes Khamis Laylatul yes. yes. Jum'ah Laylatul Jum'ah yeah, it's, it's really the time or the day of Imam Al-Hujjah Jalallahu Ta'ala so really we pray every Jum'ah mm -hmm. for Zuhur of Imam yes. Al-Hujjah uh, we are waiting for him Asha. to come and uh, change the world to peace, mm -hmm. salam, wal mahabba, all the world. Asha. And he will come, inshallah, from Kaaba, inshallah. <coughs> we, inshallah, see that day uh, uh, and we can listen to his nida, she said nida in, in English? Call. Call. We can listen to his call. Inshallah. And Riwayat said uh, that. His call will be in uh, in all the languages. Mm. That why, that why, okay, I nice could. Point. Yeah, nice point. I, I couldn't. Right. I couldn't do one qasida in all the languages mm -hmm. of the world. But I, I did one qasida in four languages. Mashallah. It's about uh, Imam al hujjah Ajjal Allah zuhurak. Ajjal Allah. Ajjal Allah zuhurak. Ajjal Allah. وين عنا مبتعد يمتل ديارك ترد والله ملنا البعود حالنا حال الورد ذبلنا محتاجين نورك عجل الله فارسي بيتو اي جان جهان قص دارا بيكران ذكر لبها الامان مهدي صاحب زمان كي شبد وقت زهورت عجل الله عجل الله ظهورك عجل الله even time is waiting, the earth isn't rotating, I see roses are dying, without you nothing's growing, you are medicine to the sick, عجل الله, لو ان فقارك ظهر, اعداك اصليهم سقر, لا تخليك الاثار, الجيشهم يا المنتظر, وفي بالحوم نذورك, عجل الله, عجل الله ظهورك, عجل الله, امر پیار امام تم پہ درود و سلام حاضر ہے تیرے غلام لب پہ بس یہ ہے پیام جان زہرا گل نرگس عجل اللہ یہ زمین آسما 
یہ جو قائم ہے جہاں یہ جو چلتی ہے ہوا یہ جو پانی ہے روا تیرے صدق میں ہے قائم عجل اللہ عجل اللہ ظہورک عجل اللہ اللہم صل علی محمد و آل محمد Thank you very much. Really beautiful. MashaAllah. Thank you, thank you. Thank you so much for blessing us with your voice. Allah yahfudkum. And before you go, if I can ask you some questions, if possible. Yes. In regards to the important... But who said I will go? I don't know. I'm trying to find another one. Ask questions. He's staying with us. Inshallah, inshallah. Until Imam Mahdi returns, I think. How important is it to actually celebrate the birth of Rasulullah? Is it important for us as Muslims, as a community, to celebrate this and to hold on to this tradition? It's very important, yeah, because actually uh, I can say the, uh, the point which uh, we can unit, mm. uh, you know, we are madahib, you know, mm. we are madahib. It's, it's real. Mm -hmm. we, we have a lot of madahib in Listen. Islamic words, okay? The only <coughs> points, the only point which all of us is Mawlid al Nabi. Very true. But unfortunately, the other side of our brothers, they don't want. Mm -hmm. mm. They don't want to celebrate. They think it is bid'ah, which is actually not bid'ah. Mm -hmm. Rasulullah, uh, he celebrated uh, the birthday of Imam al Hassan. Yes. So cel cel celebrating. A birthday is not bid'ah. Mm -hmm. mm. yes. Why to be bid'ah? He celebrated the birthday of Imam al-Hassan. Yes. Imam al Hussein. On his way. Okay, now the world has been changed. Mm -hmm. So we have our, our way to celebrate. Yeah. Maybe mm -hmm. even, even in, even, uh, uh, I mean, in my, in my home, in my house, okay? If I want to celebrate for my son mm, yes. i will do in my way maybe i bring a cake maybe no i take them to park correct you, you will do your your way correct maybe you take them to uh karbala you tell them okay the gift is for you karbala maybe uh maybe you buy for him uh, new uh, mobile phone mm. <laughs> so Lucky every, kid. everybody uh -huh. has we cannot say our my way is bid'a or your way is bid'a Okay, Rasulullah celebrated on his way. Mm -hmm. We celebrate in our way. We have qasaid, and this is not bid'ah. It's, 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 very, it's very nice to uh, recite qasaid. It's, it's a sunnah, actually, of the companions, Hassan bin Thabit, yes. amongst others who were asked by the Prophet, peace be upon his family, mm -hmm. to recite poetry. Yes, Imagine. Mm -hmm. And even the Prophet's uncle, Abu Talib, <coughs> he was a known poet. Yeah. Wow. You know, so you had people around the Prophet, peace be upon his family, who were great poets. But in the case, as I said, of Hassan bin Thabit, the Prophet would say to him, go up and recite. Uh, say, yeah. it, say it to be honest. Uh, they know. They know, yeah. They understand. Yeah. M more than me and you. And they know everything, but they don't want. I think something which I mentioned earlier in the show was the... The Sunni world separate from the Wahhabi Salafi world. Yes, the Sunni yeah. world you'll find, yes, as you know, yeah, in, in Sudan, in, 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 Egypt, in Egypt, in, Egypt, in yeah. Oman, in other places, you have the love of the Prophet and the Mawlid celebration. Of course they do. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I have been in Egypt mm. um, four years ago. Uh, it was uh, in the Mawlid and Nabawi times. Uh, we went to our friend's house. Mm. They have some special... Uh, bread or cake something yeah and correct yes yeah, and yes. they told me this is for maulid that <laughs> they, they, they force you you have to eat this is for maulid this yes. is this is baraka they tell me mm -hmm. this is baraka so even baraka in, correct. in egypt correct is normal i saw myself in uh ras al hussein uh mm -hmm. or maqam, maqam yes. ras al hussein I saw myself, the Egyptian people comes and do... Uh, yes, they touch, rub. They, yeah. they yes, touch the dhariq uh -huh. for barakah. Uh -huh. we, we don't ask the dhariq or ask Hussein to give us something. We ask Allah, but we put him as a... Intermediary. Yeah. 
I remember oh. even third of Sha'ban. Mm -hmm. I was fortunate one year to be in Al Qahira, Cairo. Third of Sha'ban. Mm -hmm. I could not believe. Honestly, I thought I was in Karbala. Wow. Candles everywhere. Yes. MashaAllah. Yes. People celebrating with joy. The Sunni world in its origin has a profound love for the Ahlul Bayt. Yes, I do. definitely, 100%. Wherever yes. you had gone, you'd mm -hmm. always find the honoring of the grandchildren of the yes. Ahlul Bayt. Sayyidina yes. Nafisa. Yes. 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 You found, for example, other parts in Pakistan and in mm -hmm. India, there are monuments for the grandchildren of Ahlul Bayt. Yes. But sadly, as we said, the Salafi Wahhabi ideology is the one that has pushed people mm -hmm. away to calling everything Bid'ah <coughs> and Shirk and so on. I By see. the way, let me tell you uh, the very famous. Uh, recitation of Quran of Abdul Basit mm -hmm. mm. which is very famous yes, yes it's very famous yes. Yes. that all of this and uh, Husari no. and uh, Manshawi yeah, and bad. Ablawi yes. Yes. do you know where mm. where was the recitation and where they recorded where? Maqam Ra'as al Hussein MashaAllah SubhanAllah MashaAllah this all Beautiful. was in Maqam Ra'as al Hussein there was not in a studio or in uh, other places awesome. it was in Raqqa Maqam all of this famous recitation which people lo love to uh, mm -hmm. listen it was in Maqam Ras al-Hussain MashaAllah I'm afraid that's all we have time for um, but so, so say that Omar really? <laughs> <laughs> say that Omar a final, a final thought please to uh, the viewers uh, something that you'd like them to take away from this um, this episode well, I think firstly we thank uh, Mullah Nazar for Definitely joining sure. joining yeah. us uh, secondly, don't forget Imam as Sadiq alayhi salam. Yes. Tomorrow we remember him. Definitely. And I think as Ja'fariya, yes. it is fundamental that on the 17th of Rabi'ah al-Awwal, we remember the Imam, um, as well as remembering his great-grandfather. Yes. And thirdly, um, try and make your children enjoy such days. Ahl al-Bayt mm -hmm. salam love a balance. Yes. They love on their days um, of farah, on their days of joy, for, them, for the people to be joyous. And on their days of huzun, for the people to be in state of grief yeah. and we need to have a nice balance so tomorrow or today let your kids enjoy as mullah said take them out buy them the you know something yes. nice gifts ice cream etc. let the people remember this as a joyous and occasion can, candy, you know, even the small yeah, candy yeah, yeah. They, they, yeah do, sure. they don't forget they remember yes. Yes. my father gave me in the birthday of prophet muhammad correct gave me, uh, correct Mashallah. and that builds a relation Mashallah. between yes. them and the great Definitely. greatest creation of god Please, in Urdu, would you like to give a final message really? to the Urdu? Called you? <laughs> <laughs> a final, a final message as we. But by the way, we do have a show tomorrow at 9 p.m. So please join us tomorrow as we will commemorate and celebrate the birthday of Imam Sadiq at 9 p.m. But uh, I would like to invite Haji Nadar to say a few words as we uh, roll the credits and as we leave the show. Please. Uh, this is the Qasida who really even you like it, Ali Ali Mawla. Allah, <laughs> I love it. Not I'm gonna clap. <laughs> and the, the person with the best at doing it is him. Ali Ali Mawla, Ali Ali Mawla, Ali Ali Mawla, Ali 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 Mawla, Ali Ali Mawla, Ali Ali Mawla, Ali. When in worry, know that I am assured. When in sorrow, know that I am consoled by a man who Allah always adores. Allah. By a man who I just simply applaud. Subhanallah. What is a struggle when you can call Ali? Allah. What is a struggle when you can call Ali? Ali Ali Mawla, Ali Ali Mawla, Ali Ali Mawla, Ali 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 Mawla, Ali Ali Mawla, Ali Ali Mawla, Ali 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 Mawla, Ali Ali Mawla, Ali Ali Mawla, Ali Naam se uske karta ho ibtida Jo Rahman o Rahim hamara khuda Har din jiske shah hai sab se juda Hamd kaseera ke laiq hai bas khuda Us Allah ne jisko kaha hai wali Ali Ali Mawla, Ali Ali Mawla, Ali Ali Mawla, Ali Qalu al-Rabi' qulna al-Awwal Ali 
قال الرابع قلنا الاول علي نص عنه في القران نزل تمت فيه النعمه من ربنا والدين بفضل الكرهار اكتمل فاسال عنه الليل وسوح الوغى افهل كان مثل علي بطل والق يادي عند الجهاد علي 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 مولى علي علي مولى علي علي مولى علي علي ناري هدري يا علي ثانك يو مولى ثانك يو سو ماتش وندرفول ابسولي وندرفول اولويز Yes, Sayyid Mohsin, tell us. Tell you, I think mean, we're off, aren't we? We should be off. Are we off? When, when are we done? If we are on, then please join us tomorrow at 9 p.m. as we'll commemorate the birthday of Imam Sadiq alayhi salam with Sayyid Dr. Amar Nakshwani. Pleasure. To all our viewers, enjoy the day, enjoy the evening. As uh, both of my guests said, please, please buy some chocolates for your children. And at least kiss them. <laughs> at least kiss them. Yeah. MashaAllah. Wow. MashaAllah. Wow. Wow. Yes. <laughs> yes. Wow. MashaAllah. Until next time, tomorrow. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh.